This is a PA200 for on semi, destined for the Czech Republic. The um, system basically it consists of the uh, probe station, the controller, control box, also known as a joystick, camera, and a microscope, light source, ERS, uh, e ERS wafer therm heated chuck assembly and one of these two uh, transformers since they're 220 and ma the majority of the system is 110 volts. We just hook two of them in series so we can go from 110 volts to 220 and then drop it back down from 220 to 110 to test the system. And then uh, a power strip, 110 volt power strip, a pair of uh, a set of ha carrying handles for the uh, probe station. The uh, PA200, we've been completely through it. This was actually the second unit that was sent. The first one was not was not repairable. It had major controller issues, and so we found that the simplest route was to simply to do, was to just take this machine and refurbish it. Uh, it was a little bit dirty, but it cleaned up really nicely. Uh, doesn't have excessive wear on anything. The uh, what we've done is we've gone through and we made sure that mechanisms like this z-axis right here on the platen works properly and you can see that the little indicator, if I can get it to come into focus here, there we go. You can see it moves smoothly giving the height of the platen. We uh, went through all of the, all the uh, lead screws, assemblies, recirculating ball assemblies for like the, the y-axis, x-axis. I'll change over to the chuck here so you can see it move. It moves smoothly. As I said, the bearing slides and the lead screw have all been lubed and uh, you can see it moves through the full eight inches of travel for an eight inch chuck and uh, I can tell it to go straight to home and then go straight there or tell it to go to load position and check will I don't think I've set the load position What we did was we uh, we also, aside from uh, cleaning and lubing the X and Y axes of the, uh, the stage assembly, we also uh, lubed the bearing slides for the pneumatic lift on the microscope. We uh, cleaned and lubed this, the bearing slides and the lead screw assemblies for the microscope. I will switch that over. Let's get over here. And this, you should be able to see it move here. A little bit of motion here. Illumination isn't that great inside this enclosure. I think you can see the microscope moving. Move back to the right. The same with the y-axis. I think we can see the microscope moving forward. And back. I'll just tell it to go home. Maybe it will see the motion a little better from right here. The uh, in addition to that, we uh, went through and on the uh, chuck assembly, we went through the z-axis 
and uh, lube that as well. You can run that up and down. And you have different speed ranges on the uh, control box here. One, two, three, and four that give you different speeds for the different functions. I don't know if you can see that move or not, but it's lifting a little more slowly. Now, uh, there were certain parts that we had to supply for this system. Uh, the chuck, I mean, the, uh, the platen that was supplied with both of these machines was not appropriate for this heated chuck, which we added. And so we supplied the platen for that. And since you guys were using magnetic positioners, we had some uh, magnetic plates, steel plates made here and had them nickel plated so that you can use a magnet based positioner on it. Now you also do have the original vacuum manifolds on the machine, so if you do have the option in the future of running a vacuum based positioner as well. These are uh, these particular positioners were not, as they were, that were not appropriate for this type of uh, a platen this large. So what we do in this situation is we, we often do, do use these little R and K type positioners. So what we do is we, ha we have these little extensions made right here and by the bracket assemblies and the probe arm. And so as you can see that works pretty well. You, we are uh, sending it out with the two uh, the two objectives that were that came with these systems, which is a 10x right here and a 2x, but of course you can add others if you like. Um, you just have to pop these old plugs. I put these old plugs in here to keep dirt out of the nose piece assembly. But you just pop those out to add the other uh, objectives in it. All in all, the, uh, the machine is in good operating condition. The one thing I was not able to do is to affect a perfectly level uh, chuck simply because someone had been into the machine before and had over tightened. This is the first machine that was sent. I can show you here, but there are there's some screws that are used to level the uh, this, this screw right here, I don't know if you can see it from the edge, but there's a leveling screw here, here, and here. Those screws had been over tightened on this machine and you lost a bit of range of adjustment. So I'm not, was not able to get it perfectly flat in the y-axis. So what you'll find is that if you're running a 500, I mean using a 100x or a 50x objective, Especially if it's zoomed in, you may have to refocus a little bit as you move across the chuck, but it's pretty minimal. And it simply wasn't worth the risk of pulling this whole assembly apart to try and replace the parts that would be needed to be replaced to get a perfectly flat, perfectly level chuck. Um, and having to use other parts, say from this system, there's no guarantee that the little pad underneath would be in any better condition, so you still might not be able to get perfectly level. One other thing that we did do was to, uh, to lube the theta mechanism, lead screw mechanism, so that works, operates nice and smoothly as well. What we'll do is, uh, let's see if we can get an image. Let me bring the chuck on back up. So we have an image in focus. Uh, the camera that you guys had supplied was the... Uh, was an old javelin, this one right here, but it was dead. So what we did was we just supplied a Panasonic, which is uh, comparable to the one that was in yours, possibly a little bit better than the original javelin. Um, let's see if I can find a little better image. This is just an old monitor we're using to demonstrate the, the optics. As you can see, it's pretty clean. Um, play with intensity a little bit here. And the light source. There we go. The, uh, the like I said, the image is clear. The uh, the microscope was actually in good shape. It just needed some serious cleaning, which we have done by SMS, our microscope servicing partner. So the uh, 
optics are good on that. We also went through the uh, focusing mechanism, so that's nice and smooth as well. The ERS uh, wafer therm uh, heated chuck assembly, you were quoted for 15 to uh, 160, so it's been tested to that. It's actually been tested a little bit lower than that. I'll go ahead and run it up to the upper temperature and we can let it climb up while we're finishing the video. Uh, light source, fiber optic cable. Most everything runs in through these two access ways on the sides of the, uh, the probe station as you see. But there's one thing, the, uh, the connector. This connector for the heated chuck control will not fit through any of these openings. So what we've done is we've simply routed it through the inside here, up under this little apron, and I've given you a, a little a little piece to zip tie this to, and it'll simply run through the front of the uh, the enclosure as you see here. I don't know how well, well you can see it, but it'll simply run through there. It won't get pinched or anything. <coughs> Excuse me. To uh, to fish it through, you'll just need to lift up on the enclosure a bit. That can be lifted up and fed through. I put some zip ties up under here to zip tie it in so it's secured. One thing to consider uh, when you go to connect this uh, system up as supplied a ground, that a ground wire that runs from the probe station to heated chuck assembly that really needs to be connected before you power up this heated chuck. The, uh, you'll see two transformers here. Uh, you'll get one of them. Uh, the majority of this system is 110 volt with exception for the heated chuck assembly which is 220. But the 110 components uh, will be run through this transformer which we'll have set up for the proper voltage. And you'll just, you'll just plug, your, uh, plug this power strip into the front right here at the 110 volt connection. And you will have, this plug will fit in a typical European type connector like what's used in the Czech Republic. I'm just using this so that I can jump, I can boost our power from 110 to 220 into this one so that this can be tested at 220 volts to make sure it functions properly. Um, you have uh, four carrying handles here for the probe station that will help you load the uh, probe station onto the ISO table, which is floating. I don't know if you can see the motion there, but the ISO table's been through as well and the enclosure we've uh, replaced these gas springs because the ones that were on it were worn we touched up the paint on the on the enclosure and the probe station as well and um, I think that's most of it um, if you guys have any questions you can call us we'll answer be glad to answer any questions you might have but that's pretty much it that's the system that you're going to be getting